YouTube. Apparently we had a gas leak and we called Amarin to shut off the meter. And when I got here, all the doors are open and it's freezing cold in here. And upon further investigation, it turns out that it was only the man lift batteries exploded. That little orange guy right there. And it smells like rotten eggs in here. It is awful. Looking wet. Apparently that these middle, are the problem. That middle one was sizzling. It was just... it's sizzling? Man, that could have been bad. Yeah. That could have been bad. There's Joe. There's my boss. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. We got the engine in. Now all we've got to do is suck everything back up and fire this puppy up. Sometimes you got to send the young guys in to do the heavy work down low. My back just can't take it anymore. <laughs> It's perfectly in the hole. There's no way I could get in there. How you doing, Ann? Oh, great. So comfortable. We got the damper in, got the hydraulic reservoir mounted and all bolted up, all the hoses on, got the menagerie of wiring all put where it needs to be, all the starter connections. Now we've got to work with this. Get this engine harness mounted on here. goes up top this is the turbo actuator and the turbo speed sensor comes down here to the engine coolant temperature sensor and then this plugs into the air intake all right we got all the wiring and the hoses tidied up now it's time to get the alternator on so we can hook up the FDA harness and the power wire it's snap on Wednesday 
How's it going, Ryan? All right. Back to it. This is Ryan Wepler, Wepler Tool Sales. How's it going, Ryan? Yeah. Do I have any mustard on my face? I just had a <laughs> Welcome to the truck. All right. What kind of deals you got today? Uh, over here, I got this uh, whole display of all the ratchets. We got 15% off. Ooh, nice. And I got a uh, 3H drive impact sockets. Yeah. Cool. Since uh, Zeth just made this a surprise visit, I didn't have a chance to organize. So, uh, <laughs> well, this is what we Zeth get to see that. every week. Yeah. Yeah, this is unfiltered. All kinds of rechargeable lights. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no problem. And then uh, we got the new, uh, the new handles. What's new about them? Old. Just the design. Oh, okay. So here's the I didn't even know they made those still. Oh yeah, they're still out. Huh. That's a nice little set. These Terminal kit. They come with a mini pick set and screwdrivers and torques. Cool. And picks. All right. We got to get these young guys to buy something on yeah. this truck. They need now, tools. Here's blue box, but this box right here. It's teal, so nobody gets excited about teal, but when you add black to it, it looks pretty sweet. That's pretty sharp. I like the contrast. Yeah. They got the... Uh, That's got Lucas's name all on it. Here. It's also got this, uh, this set up here. Oh, yeah. You put the dividers in the there. Dividers. Man, that's yeah, sweet. You put your hammer bits in there, your drills, and it's yeah. got three full-length drawers. I like that's it. That's the new feature on them. It's just like Cody's Snap box. Snap-ons. As a whole, they're making bigger boxes, bigger drawers. Bigger tools, so, or more tools. Yeah. What's the price tag? <clears throat> On what? The box. box. This box is list price $88.59. Oh. And with the deal, you can get it for probably around six, and then trade in your box. I mean, you're looking for probably around 35, maybe four. That's a pretty good deal. <laughs> That, that's a good deal. That's a heck of a box. How much do you think I can sell your box for? Uh, 2500 2500 <laughs> That's fair. Alright, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Let's make it happen. Let's make a deal Wednesday. Woohoo! I think about it. Oh, come on. That's definitely should be. The more you think, the more you pull the wallet out. He's gonna do it. It's empty. All right, back to this engine here. We've got the left side pretty much wrapped up. We're gonna go ahead and get the accessory drive on so we can get the belt on so I can go ahead and put this hydraulic hose up for the fan drive. Okay, I went ahead and I got the air intake pipe on. I got the alternator on. I got the accessory drive on, new belt. Went ahead and put a new set, uh, serpentine belt on. Got a new fan drive belt in here. Got the hydraulic hose hooked up and the vent line routed. Now the left side is officially done. Now we're gonna move to the right side. Okay, on this side, we need to finish up the hose connections at the top of the reservoir. We need to get the exhaust hooked up to the turbo and all the heat shields put into place. Got to get the debris shield over the exhaust manifold and get the air intake pipe in. Um, Got to hang the, the coolant tank, tidy up these hoses, and then finish the fan drive. And then I think, oh, and we got to do the charge air pipe between the turbo and after cooler, so we'll get that done and then we should be pretty much wrapped up. I need to go ahead and get that lift strap off too as well. Let's do this. It's time for the break-in oil.
morning, YouTube. Let's pick up where we left off. All right, I'm gonna put the outer shiv on the driven and I've got the belt being held up here with a two by four. This is a good way to hold this belt up into place so you're not fighting it, trying to put this upper shiv on. Here's the fan drive hub. You can see this is the old one here. And this is the new improved one. You can tell it's balanced. It's got these holes drilled in it. And whenever I put these new fan drives on, the engine runs way smoother. There's a lot less vibration. Fan drive works a lot better. Another part of the fan drive upgrade is you get a greaser on your driven. So there's a greaser here, and then inside the shaft here, there's a relief valve, so you don't have to worry about over greasing it. So that's where the new greaser is before. These weren't greasable, and you had to just pan pack the bushings yourself. So that's a huge part of the upgrade. This uh, tone wheel that holds the springs and also the speed sensor reads off of it is improved. The shivs are improved. The hub is improved and the drive is improved, the hydraulic part. And there's also a new rotary union, which likes to fail also. So that's why Deer came up with this new style rotary union to keep things from having leaks. And you get hydraulic oil on this belt and it slips and then your fan speeds low and you get codes. So a lot of part of the reducing the problems with these fan drives is to reducing the vibration. So they did a really good job in reducing the vibration and smoothed these things out. And hopefully they'll last a lot longer. Okay, we got a new coolant tank on. I went ahead and replaced it because the old one was kind of dingy because the EGR cooler, it was uh, sooted black. So I wanted to start fresh with this engine and put a new coolant tank in so we know if we got an engine failure later on down the road, if this tank gets black soot in it or engine oil, we know we've got a problem. And I went ahead and installed the new hoses and the upper radiator hose. All right, it's time for my favorite part. We get to put the Derbis shield on. We added these shields on back when these tractors were new for a pip to keep crop residue from around the exhaust and catch it on fire. So now we're gonna get this piece in and try to get the hose grommets and the line grommets into place, and which is the hardest part about putting the shield on. part I already got this piece in these are two pieces that clamp together to protect these lines and to keep debris from leaking in here so I've already got this piece snaked in there this goes over the top of it and you got to get these grommets in these lines and in these little brackets at the same time which is the hard part so we're gonna go ahead and get this done and get this shield out of our line all hooked up so now all that's left is fill this thing full of coolant and then I got to do some other repairs with the, uh, the hydraulic oil and the filters and stuff and then we can start it Change 
hydraulic filter. Okay, now that we've got the reservoir full, now we need to reprogram the ECU and calibrate the EGR valves and calibrate the injectors. But this is all top secret information, you guys can't watch this. Okay, we got all the information in the ECU programmed and we're gonna go ahead and crank this thing over. I've got um, the injector harness unplugged so it won't fire. I wanna build up oil pressure before this thing fires. And my batteries are dead. So we're gonna get them charged up and then we're gonna crank it to build a little pressure. All right, here we go. Let's get the injection harness plugged back in. Fire it for real. the engine runs smooth now I'm gonna check the oil make sure that it's at full and then we're gonna start it back up again and then we'll make sure nothing's leaking. All right, we're running the engine wide open throttle we got good oil pressure we're about out of fuel though but it don't last long enough to get me to the fuel tank he's running dead smooth really turned out nice We got the preliminary break-in procedure done. The only thing left is to run the engine under full load. So we don't have a PTO, so there's no way for us to do that here. So we're gonna have to wait till we get this thing in the field to run it under a load. And then I'll just tell the customer the procedure to break the engine in and the guidelines. And uh, the engine ran for, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so, got it up to operating temperature. And I checked the engine over for leaks and I don't have any leaks. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> filters and then we're going to shield this uh, the engine up get it all tidied up and then we'll be able to go outside and do a transmission calibration these plugs are fun to get to oh man we got another man down got oil in my ratchet Fixed. that wasn't nearly enough nailed it all right, we're getting her filled up. Hydraulic oil and transmission. Transmission's been pumping it to the axles. We'll have to put some more in it. Yikes. 155 quarts in this bad boy. 
All right, now we got the uh, transmission, the axles filled up at the correct level. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the shields on. I still gotta put all the engine shields on, get them cleaned up, get the hood back down, and then we're gonna take this thing outside, try to get the oil hot enough to where we can calibrate the transmission. I know you guys want to stick your pretty fingers into this beautiful fan drive, but I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to shield it up. I'm sorry. Number two shield. Oh yeah. No one's getting their fingers in there. Play. I get to play that game, find the bolt. I found a bolt. This Darwin, we're going to get this hood back on. Almost forgot the exhaust debris shields. Gotta get those on or else crop material can get around that exhaust, pack in there and catch on fire and we don't want that. So let's get these shields on. All right, I got all the dirt and debris cleaned up and got the shields installed. Now we can take it outside and run it, get the engine hot, get the hydraulic oil up to temperature and then we can calibrate the transmission. There, that's better. All right, let's change this cab filter. I got a feeling it's gonna be dirty. Would you like to breathe that air? Yeah, man. Okay, got the other the circulation cap filter pulled out. Got another one in there. Evaporator looks clean. Dang it. It's hard to do this with one hand, guys. I'm trying to work and film all this by myself. And I nailed it. You'll have that on these big jobs. I made it to the fuel tank. Let's fill this baby up. Now we got some fuel on the side gauge here. Now let's do our transmission calibration. All right, we're doing the transmission calibration. It says the transmission's cold, so it's going through a warm-up cycle. It's going in and cycling all the clutches, trying to keep the oil up the best it can to do the calibration because the oil needs to be 142 degrees Fahrenheit, so we've got a ways to go. Now she's going. Let's see 
PLH. That's what clutch it's on. Sometimes this thing will surge real hard and rock the whole tractor whenever it's calibrating. It's normal. Guys, we're done with this one. Now it just needs to go to the wash bay and get washed up. It was fun, 9430, while well, it lasted. Good luck, bud. Thought I'd give a nice present to the three-man guys, see if they can rebuild this baby. Rest in peace, buddy. Rest in peace.